One thing almost all banjo players want to be able to do is play fast. For you, that might mean playing like this. Or it just might mean being able to play a little faster than you can now. Whatever your goals are, there are specific ways to increase speed on the banjo, and I'm going to show them to you right now in this video. Fast banjo playing has always been a part of bluegrass music. Perhaps the earliest recording of bluegrass features a young Earl Scruggs playing Little Maggie at a quick 145 beats per minute. There is a wide range of tempos in bluegrass music, and not everything needs to be played as fast as possible. But if you're serious about playing bluegrass banjo, then being able to play fast is a valuable tool to have in your arsenal of techniques. One common piece of advice is that in order to play fast, you need to start by playing slow. And that is true, but there's a little more to it than that. Let's use Foggy Mountain Breakdown as an example. Our goal is to play this song fast, but at the same time, we want to make sure we're playing with consistent timing, no mistakes, and good tone. In order to do that, we're going to start by playing the song slowly with consistent timing, no mistakes, and good tone. This starts by really familiarizing yourself with the material. If you can't play through something at any tempo without making mistakes or stopping, then it's not time to increase speed yet. And this really isn't just for beginners. Every time I learn something new, I make sure I can play it correctly at an extremely slow tempo. In order to develop consistent timing, I recommend you use a metronome. Ron Block, banjo player for Allison Krauss in Union Station, who practices regularly with a metronome, says that a metronome is like checking in with time headquarters. It doesn't move and it doesn't respond to you. It's going to give you an unchanging reference point by which to compare your own sense of timing. There are a lot of metronomes available, but I personally use the Pro Metronome app for iPhone. Notice that I've been saying consistent timing instead of good timing. Timing is a subjective notion, and all banjo players have slightly different tendencies when it comes to timing. If you listen to Earl Scruggs, J.D. Crow, and Ralph Stanley, you'll hear three very different ways to interpret timing, all of which I would consider good timing. You'll have your own sense of timing, and a metronome won't rob you of that, but playing with the metronome will tell you exactly when you have a tendency to speed up or slow down. So, start playing the material, in this case, Foggy Mountain Breakdown, at a speed that allows you to play comfortably and without mistakes. We need to establish a baseline because our goal is to eventually be this comfortable at higher speeds. I personally like to start around 60 beats per minute, but you should start wherever you're comfortable. As you play, make sure that every note is evenly spaced and at a relatively even volume. If you can do that, then you're ready to increase the speed. If you find that you're consistently making mistakes, then you either need to slow down or become more familiar with the material. This is one of the most crucial aspects of practicing. When you make a mistake, acknowledge it honestly and deal with it. Don't be afraid to practice a pattern or a roll on its own over and over again just to make sure you're comfortable with it. When you do increase speed, make sure you do so gradually. We really only want to increase the difficulty by a small amount so that we can acclimate to the new speed and maintain our tone and technique. I generally will increase the tempo by only 5 or 10 beats per minute at a time. And as you repeat the song, feel free to increase the speed as you feel comfortable. But before we get too far, we need to talk a little bit about technique. At very slow speeds, it's pretty easy to get away with inefficient technique, and usually this means a lot of unnecessary muscle tension. Obviously, there needs to be some muscle tension in order for us to actually move our fingers, but in general, we want to be as relaxed as possible while still maintaining tone and volume. We can't consciously control every muscle in our hands all the time, but if you pay attention, then you'll notice when certain muscle groups tense up. It might be in your hands, or your wrists, or your arms, or even your neck and your back. Any unnecessary tension like this is going to limit your range and ease of motion and actually puts you at risk for injury. So if you're unable to play at a certain speed without too much muscle tension, then it's in the best interest of your playing and your health to slow down and make smooth, relaxed movements a habit of your playing. Assuming you're conscious of muscle tension and you're not making too many mistakes, as you progress, you'll eventually reach a tempo that's a little too fast for you to keep up with. That's your limit for today. But that doesn't mean we can't still make progress. 
Try dropping the tempo about 10 beats per minute and then play at that speed for as long as you can. What we're doing here is building stamina near our maximum speed. Then tomorrow, when you come back and do this process all over again, playing near your maximum speed won't be as physically demanding or intimidating. If you wanna make consistent and lasting progress, then you'll wanna practice this way as regularly as you can maybe every day or every other day. It definitely won't happen overnight, but if you practice with a purpose, then you will see results. However, practicing with a metronome is not the only way to increase speed and dexterity on the banjo. Another option is to play along with recordings at fast tempos. Ideally, you wanna find a recording that is right around your maximum speed, and your only job is to try to keep up. <laughs> It's not necessarily the most efficient way of building speed on the banjo, but it's a lot of fun and it simulates the feeling of playing with a real band, which is pretty different from playing with a metronome. Of course, we're still going to try to maintain our relaxed technique, but the act of reaching for that higher tempo can be pretty productive. Playing along with these fast recordings for an extended period of time will help you build stamina, which you're going to need if you want to play fast. So now that we know how to develop speed, how fast is fast enough? That really depends on your goals. Most professional banjo players can play cleanly and comfortably around 160 beats per minute to 180 beats per minute. But how fast should you practice any one particular song? When I was studying at East Tennessee State University, I briefly took lessons with Adam Steffi, who was the mandolin player with Allison Krauss Union Station, Mountain Heart, The Boxcars, a bunch of other really great bluegrass bands. He told me that in order to play comfortably at one tempo, then he would practice until he could play faster than he needed to. Then, when he went back to the original tempo, it would be much easier by comparison. Let's say then that I wanted to play Foggy Mountain Breakdown at 160 beats per minute, which is about the tempo of the original 1949 recording. To really feel comfortable at that tempo, then I'm going to try and practice until I can play at maybe 170 or 180 beats per minute. Then when I drop back down to 160, it'll feel a lot more comfortable. Building speed and dexterity is an endless process. As with other skills, it's something you're going to develop gradually over a long period of time. So remember these things to efficiently increase speed on the banjo. Start slowly and gradually increase speed as you practice, and make sure you're really familiar with the material before you increase the speed. Use a metronome to develop even and consistent timing. This can also be useful for monitoring your progress as you can take note of what your maximum speed is every time you practice. Be wary of unnecessary muscle tension. Sometimes we just want to muscle through it, but playing fast requires a balance of power and finesse that can't be achieved through brute force alone. Don't be afraid to push your limits, even if you never really have a reason to play, say, 160 beats per minute. If you can get to that tempo, then playing at slower tempos is going to be so much easier. You can get the tablature for Foggy Mountain Breakdown at my website or at patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. Just in case you haven't learned that one yet, it's a good one to know. And on that note, I want to thank everyone who is supporting me currently on Patreon. There are now 40 people supporting me on Patreon, and I can't tell you how much easier it makes things. These videos take many, many hours of writing and filming and editing. It's, it's a lot of work, and I really love doing it, but it makes it a lot easier to spend that amount of time uh, when I have support from all you people. So thank you so much. And if you haven't checked it out yet, go ahead and check out Patreon. It's where you can get extra tabs, extra videos, bonus content, all kinds of stuff that you can't get here on YouTube. Anyway, if you like this video and you want to learn more about Bluegrass Banjo, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below letting me know what else you'd like to hear about in a video like this. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.